أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد فها نحن أعيدنا إلى جلسات التفسير لهذا اليوم المبارك Here we are, resuming our tafsir sitting, as usual, every Friday, every Jumat day, weekly. This is a weekly tafsir that we are doing online because of the COVID-19 that has not yet permitted us to have the full activities resumption within Aliuda Mosque GDPIG. Today, we will be having a look into the tefsir of verse 145 from Surah to Ali Imran, Quran chapter 3. May Almighty Allah enable us to benefit from it abundantly. Malam, verse 145 from Surah to Ali Imran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim Wa ma kana li nafsin anta muta illa bi idhni allahi kitaban Ajala, Wamei Yuridi Sawaba Dunya Nukti Minha, Wamei Yuridi Sawaba Al Akhirati Nukti Minha, Wasanaji Zishakiri. Audu Bilahi Mina Shaitan in Raji. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ كِتَابًا مُعَجَّلًا وَمَنْ يُرِدِ ثَوَابَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَنْ يُرِدْ وَمَنْ يُرِدْ ثَوَابَ الْآخِرَةِ نُوتِهِ مِنْهَا وَسَنَجَزِ الشَّاكِرِينَ The English translation of the meanings. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُتْ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ أَن تَمُتَ وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Almighty Allah in this verse 145 of Surah to Ali Imran is telling us that وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَن تَمُوتَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ No person shall die. It will not be possible for any soul to depart its body. It is impossible that any person shall die without the leave of Allah, without the permission of Allah. إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ كِتَابًا مُؤَجَّلًا It is only with the permission of Allah كِتَابًا مُؤَجَّلًا at an appointed time the time being fixed as by writing Wamayuridi. 
ومن يريد ثواب الدنيا نؤته منها whosoever desires the reward of the near life we will give him of it ومن يريد ثواب الآخرة نؤته منها also whosoever desires the reward of the hereafter we will also give him of it but one thing is certain that we will surely reward those who are thankful was shakiri we will compensate the grateful ones. Those who are grateful among our servants, we will give them reward. That is verse 145. In this verse, Almighty Allah is refuting the notion of premature death or untimely death, as people are saying. Almighty Allah is telling us that there is nothing like untimely death or premature death, as many people are fond of saying. Whenever a young person dies, you will hear people say that he died untimely. When a young child dies, they will say that is a premature death. There is nothing like that in the Sharia. There is nothing like that in the sight of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here that Wama kana the not sin ante muta illa biiznillah. No soul shall die except with the permission of Allah. Nafs, nafs is mentioned here. And nafs is the spirit, the soul, the ruh. But what is meant is the person who is the carrier of that soul. The person whose body that soul is living within. Nafs is in the sense of the body carrying the spirit with which a person breathes. The nafs, the soul, is the spirit of breathing. Because once the body stops breathing, it means that that body is confirmed dead. It has departed this world. And uh, it is actually the departure of the spirit. When the spirit, the ghost, when it departs the body, a person is declared dead. And that is why you as a Muslim, when you are still living, make sure that you don't die before your death comes. The Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam told you, Masalul Mu'mini Lady Yazukur Rabba Wa Lady La Yazukur Rabba Ka Masalil Hayy Wal Mayit That the simple example of a believer who always remembers his Lord and the other one who fails to remember his Lord is just like the living and the dead. So do not turn yourself into a dead person before you die. When the spirit departs the body, the person is declared 
dead. And with that, his life ends. He will go to no returning to this near life of the world. That is why the Sharia of Islam forbids the undue deprivation and denial of right to live except based on three reasons, three conditions, as in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, la yahillu damum in muslim, that it is not permissible to take the life of a Muslim person, illa bihidas alas, except based on three reasons. In one of the factual reasons that can necessitate the take of his life. As they Azani, as I be Zani, the married person who takes into adultery, committing zina, will have to be killed. Because if his life is spared, he will be confusing the DNA of people. He will be spoiling the lineage of people. When a single woman is having many men fucking her, she will be carrying from this gene, from this gene, from this. And with that, everything will be mixed up in her body. And so, a person who is perpetrating this error is declared unwanted in this life. <laughs> he must not stay alive. He has to give way for others to live in. And that is why our religion attach much importance to family affairs. Family is very, very important for a person so that he will grow up with good and sound upbringing. Someone should be there to train a child. One nafs be nafs. One nafs be nafs. The Prophet said that the other is for eliminating a person is if that person himself has committed a murder. If a person murders another person, he kills another person, he himself must be killed. That is the rule of Sharia. You see? The professor now says, the number three person that should be killed is the one that abandons his religion. Someone who has been a Muslim but turns apostate, that person does not deserve remaining on the earth. He must go under the earth. He must go under the earth. He does not deserve remaining above the earth. Why? Because he is now displaying antagonism to the Jama'a, the collective purpose of this Ummah, this Ummah 
that is the best religious community brought out to guide the rest of the Ummah. This hadith is number 14 in Arba'in and Nawawiya. It is reported by both Imams Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet informed us that the body of a Muslim cannot be spilled except due to three judicial reasons. Out of this theory, non-Muslims as well as the nominal Muslims, those who are not Muslims and those who are half-half, half-half, one leg inside and the other leg outside. Those who are not practical but are carrying the names without actually practicing the religion. And if you talk to them, you say, I am liberal, I am a liberal Muslim, uh, let me enjoy my life. So non-Muslims and the nominal Muslims, while they admit the first two reasons, that is, a married person who continues to commit adultery, and a murderer, a killer, an assassin, who himself and herself must also be killed, in vengeance, in retaliation. These non-Muslims and nominal Muslims have continued to kick against the killing of an apostate, someone who has been a Muslim and religious on his face in Islam. They have been faulting the killing of that person. They disdain killing him under the pretext of freedom of thought and freedom of religion. But if you look around, you will find that this freedom of religion is never observed when it comes to dealing with Muslims by non-Muslims. Look at the colonial era. The way they brought the Bible in one hand and the Western education in the other hand. Muslim children were being forced to abandon their religion and embrace Christianity or at least get out of Islam. And you know, this is the reason why those colonial people have tried all they could to divide the Muslims. They displayed the policy of divide the rule. They introduced the Ahmadiyya movement amid the Muslims. And they supported so many other movements that are dividing the Muslims or that are capable of causing problem within the Muslim circle. If they truly believe in the freedom of religion, freedom of thought, freedom of thinking, why should they be doing that? As for Islam, Islam says La no compulsion should be displayed when it comes to the issue of religion. But look what is happening in Palestine. The Israelites on daily basis are killing 
innocent Palestinians and look into far Asia. The way the Miamians have been killed. And then the coronavirus that you are talking about, how did it come into being in Wuhan? Was it not because the Chinese government wanted to reduce the population of the Muslims? They wanted to reduce the population of the Muslims. And so they had a laboratory error. They did not know that that virus will go outside that place. <laughs> but unfortunately for them, it affected the whole world. All that those people are doing against the Muslims is a disrespect for the Muslim life. They have no respect for the Muslim life. At the same time, they are kicking against the killing of anybody who has been a Muslim but suddenly tongues are posted and the Sharia dictates it's killing. The reason for eliminating an apostate is to discourage other people and to deter them from imitating him. Because if you want to be faithful, remain faithful. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent so many prophets and messengers. He now finalized them with the emergence of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are telling us that, okay, is it not the right of a child to choose religion for himself after growing up? We say no. We will tell you no. Because if you are turning that child into Christianity, what is Christianity? You yourself, you know that Christianity is nothing to write home about. Prophet Lisa, Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam, never and never introduced any other religion besides Islam. Islam has been the religion of all of them right from Adam down to Muhammad so you should make no effort to reduce the population of the Muslims and that is why the Sharia made room for increasing the population of the Muslims and not to decrease their population you have to also consider how our ulama have different opinions when it comes to the killing of a person who is not performing salat and he considers himself to be a Muslim. While some of them uphold the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu saying that that person must be eliminated Others are saying that, no, you are to continue confronting him with the fact until he will understand his status and to know that it will not favor him to lose his existence here in the world. Allah created all and sundry for the sole purpose of service to him. So, no one should ever think of worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having been a Muslim, a worshipper of Allah, if that person now reneges on his face, 
the best is to eliminate him. And you, people on the borderline, that say that you welcome that person, you must know that that person will never be sincere with you. He will never be sincere with you. He will just be watching whether what you are doing is good or not. And you have seen with your very eyes how many people who joined you in your religion returned to Islam on discovering that what you are doing is not what Jesus asked you to do. And that the Muslims are the people who are actually doing what Jesus والسلام, did before Almighty Allah raised him up. And to when Almighty Allah will return him, he will join the Muslims in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because he himself considered Allah alone to be the Lord and the God. So he did not claim himself as son of God. Kitaban Mu'ajala. Kitaban Mu'ajala. The death of every person has been fixed and written down. His life will only expire at an appointed time. And that is why Almighty Allah informs us in Surah to Zumar, Quran chapter 39 and verse 42. Surah to Zumar, Surah to Zumar, Quran chapter 39, verse 42. Almighty Allah says, Allah who yet awafan al Fusa in a motia. Allah who yet awafan al Fusa in a motia. Well, let him lam tem. Well, let him lam tamut. Fima na miha. Well, let him lam tamut. Fima na miha. I am sick of letting God or Ali Allah is the one that causes all souls to die by the time they die. Those that don't die while sleep. Why asleep? If a person does not die in sleep, it means that Almighty Allah is going to release him. While at the same time, Almighty Allah will still take away the soul of the one whom he has decreed to die. And the one that he spears his life, that one will be for a determined period, which remains in the knowledge, divine knowledge of Allah. Not that that one will remain alive in the world forever. During the battle of Uhud, many people were killed, and uh, some people started saying, "Didn't we warn you not to follow Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to that battle with your few number to go and confront?" the troops of your enemies. Your enemies are about 3,000 while you are less than 1,000. How come do you think that you will be able to confront them? Didn't we warn you? See now how many of you were killed there. So Almighty Allah says that ah, the matter is not like that. No soul could die without the permission of Allah. 
Allah now says, we are going to this our dunya. And this is referring to those Akas who disobeyed the instruction of the Prophet during the Battle of Uhud and deserted their hosts just to join their colleagues in collecting the boots and the spoils of war left behind by the fleeing. But they ended up causing a pandemonium for the rest of the Sahaba because many Sahaba were then killed and attained to martyrdom. Why did even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam himself was wounded? He was wounded so badly. To the extent that uh, he lost some of his incisors teeth in that battle. In So this is just a caution to you Muslims to always obey the order. Be obedient of the superpower. Always display obedience to those in the corridor of power. If they are asking you to do what is right, it is only when they ask you to do what is wrong that you should disobey. Allah says here, Man yuri disawa dunya no Anyone who desires the reward of the near life, we will give him part of it. He will never be able to achieve all of his aims. It is impossible for a person to have all that he wants in life. Because if you have been given all pleasures of life, you will not enjoy them. So Almighty Allah gives you according to your need. <laughs> and that is why if uh, you try to have more than your need, you will suffer. <laughs> you will suffer. Look at where we are now in this room. If a person is to buy a TV, buy a decoder, buy a radio, buy this and that, and put everything on, operate everything on, so that you want to enjoy. How will he enjoy? Which one does he want to enjoy? There is confusion. He will not enjoy. That is a simple example for you. So, you have to enjoy what you need. Enjoyment should be according to the necessity, not anyhow. Now, Almighty Allah says, Waman yuri akhirati no uti as for a person who desires the reward of the hereafter and to fought with uh, discipline, we will also give him of it. In the Battle of Uhu, majority of the Sahaba fought with discipline. Only a few number of them had aspired for the worldly gains instead of aspiring for the hereafter gains. And they regretted what they did. The 
it was a great lesson for them. Wasa Najizi Shakirin. Wasa Najizi Shakirin. Allah now says that eventually we will appreciate those who are grateful. We will reward them. We will compensate them. Those who stand by our directives, we will reward them here and hereafter. How come? That is because they will be having a sure reward. Either martyrdom or heroism. They will either be honored with martyrdom by being killing in the path of Allah during the battle or with heroism that people after them will be speaking well of them. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Reward is always according to how grateful are you. And that is why here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that he is going to give them so and so certain reward. He said, that reward is open because it cannot be quantified. It is not specific. No specific quantity is mentioned about their reward. It is limitless. A limitless reward. Don't you know that those who will enter Al Jannah will be having limitless enjoyment? While the enjoyments of this world where we are are limited. And we even call all the possessions here vanities because they have to vanish. And to concrete this, we have in another portion of Quran, especially in Surah Al Isra, Quran chapter 17, in verse 20, Surah Al Isra, Quran chapter 17, in verse 20, Almighty Allah says there, Kullan numidu haula, wa haula ibn atoy rabbik. Kullan numidu haula, each of those who are making efforts to abide by our instructions. Each of them, either these ones, we give them a portion of reward. And also, we give these ones a portion of reward from Allah. Because that is from the grants of your own Lord, bounty of your Lord, from the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Almighty Allah is Rahman Rahim, and that is why it says here, Wa man kana atau rabbi kama zura. The gift of your Lord is not confined. It's limitless. It's not been limited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman and is Rahim. He will do good to all he created to live here in the world. But in the hereafter, only those who sincerely abide by his directives that he will shower his mercy upon them. Let us have a look into the commentaries mentioned by the writers of Atefsirul Yasa. These people have to tell us here that nobody will ever die except with the permission of Allah and his divine decree. 
wa hatta yastawfiya li muddatan lati qaddaraha Allah la he will not die until he will exhaust the life span which on metala had predetermined for him to live here in the world kataba Allah dhalika ala subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote that one kitaban muakkatan in a book that will come to pass in a book that will come to pass at the peculiar time decreed for it no untimely death and no immature death la yataqaddamu ala ajalihi there is no premature death he will not have any thing to be called untimely death wala yataakhir just has nobody will ever release the ghost after the expiry of his lifespan <laughs> it is exactly at the expiry of his lifespan that he will release the ghost he will not release it before or after because of metala told us in kulla shay'in khalaqna bi qadar we have written everything with the divine decree our calculation is very very accurate woman yatlubu bi amalihi arad dunya anyone who works something good but his intention is just the gains of this world no tihi ma qasamna lahu min rizqi we will give him what we have allotted to him of the means of sustenance yes we will enable him to have what will sustain him here in this life wala hazza lahu fil akhirah bet on the path from the world he will have no portion no portion of good reward in the year after woman yet lobo bi amalihi as for a person who seeks with his good deed that is doing ali jaza amin allah fil akhirah a reward from allah in the hereafter namunahu we will grant him ma talabahu what he has demanded it is demand and supply demand and supply the way you do in your transactions here in the world eh demand and supply you will be supplied according to your demand wa nu utihi jazaahu and so we will give him his reward wa firan in abundance so abundantly ma ma lahu fi dunya min rizqin maqsum in addition to whatever he might have enjoyed in this worldly life as it as it or oh, as his own portion <laughs> what has been allotted to him and allocated to him eh? here in the world he will enjoy it then when he dies he will still enjoy more in the hereafter fahada qad shakarana bi ta'ati because this one has been grateful to us with his mind of obedience wa jihadihi and we with his spirit of making effort to serve us in the world being patient being patient is not easy to serve allah the person will have to be very very patient 
considerate, persevering with patience. So, for suffering and then persisting on forging ahead, we are going to reward him so abundantly. We have to appreciate it. You know, Almighty Allah says, that Allah does not need punishing you in as much as you appreciate what he is doing to you. you while you know that Almighty Allah himself is so appreciative of good things that a person does. And that is why you have to even appreciate good Get shots from fellow human beings. You should not turn in gratitude to fellow human beings, not to talk to, not to talk of talking, uh, to, uh, turning and becoming in gratitude and ungrateful towards Allah, your Creator. Was Shakirina Khairan, and so we are going to compensate those who are grateful in good. We are going to give them good reward. We are going to give them what corresponds to their good teaching. A person who has done well, we are not going to punish him. A person who has done wrong, if we are not going to give him what will not correspond to his deed, how come we will now give what will not correspond to the Good DJ of someone who has performed well. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. We pray that Almighty Allah should continue to inspire us with the spirit of continuing to be good servants. Fala hawla wala huwata illa billah. اللهم ربنا لا تزيد قلوبنا بعد عيد هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستكفرك ونتوب إليك